Tell logo. Okay, that's what we want. We want to hand over to you. All right. Thank you. Okay. So if people are seeing the Tao logo, then that's good. And uh, I'll, I'll just accelerate my talk again. My apologies for the, uh, for the hiccup here. So I'll quickly just get right into the, what we want to talk about. So today I actually wanted to narrow the focus. So that's fine that we have a limited amount of time here. Uh, rather than bombard you with a million um, kinds of features, uh, luckily we are an open source company. So you can either go get our code and install at GitHub, or you can download and install the solution at tautesting.com. Uh, we also have uh, a live demo site that you can try online if you wanna try out the, the, the authoring experience. What I wanna show you guys today is our new design system that we've incorporated into um, our, our newer products. Both these products have been used at large scale for, um, for summative assessments in Europe. Uh, so I'm showing you new design systems that are actually being used live today. And um, I want to share with you what our goals were for that user experience and why they are important for our new products. So just as a way of introducing myself, and I'll skip through this pretty quickly given the time constraint, I uh, have been working uh, for 22 years in assessment. I'm now Director of Product Strategy and Solutions here at OAT. Um, I did uh, started a lot of my work in uh, research, primarily based in the accommodation and assessment area. So uh, I then participated quite a bit in uh, the IMS standards, uh, principally uh, as a leader of the APEP and QTI3 and the Access for All groups. Uh, and I'm now responsible for the product management uh, here at OAT for the Tau products. So. Uh, OAT, uh, right, we're, we're, we focus on assessment. We, we have uh, a proven track record in the US K-12 higher education space. We are open source, as I mentioned, and so we like to share uh, our solutions. And uh, we have successfully delivered to quite a few people. Over 100 million tests have been delivered uh, worldwide since the company's inception. And, uh, you know, the, the amount of tests we deliver each year uh, has been growing dramatically. So the brief for the user experience, right? So what we wanted to achieve with our new uh, design systems, high usability, right? So we wanted to take a universal design approach to try to meet the needs of the most amount of people right out of the box. Uh, we wanted to make sure that our products were WCAG 2.1 AA compliant, right? So full access to these products. So what that means is for us, uh, not just doing a facelift for our um, existing interfaces. It means starting from the beginning for our design systems so that um, the organization of the page and how the structure is made uh, helps assistive technology access and use our platforms. We wanted to make sure that we met a wide range of age groups, right? Six and up, right? So we tested across these various groups to make sure that it would be usable by these various age groups. We wanted to make sure we had access for a wide range of devices, right? As we are all moving to more mobile and uh, tablet-based kinds of interfaces, particularly in those K-12 spaces. Um, we wanted to make sure we were responsive to those kinds of digital um, uh, platforms and we wanted to have a modern design. Uh, and then, you know, as an assessment company, we wanted to make sure that we had our users focus on the content, particularly in this test taker uh, mindset, right? They shouldn't be uh, bedazzled by our uh, design flourishes during the middle of their testing. They should be focusing on the content and trying to answer the questions to the best of their ability. So that's the brief that we use for that. So I'm gonna now attempt some uh, live uh, demoing of the systems. Uh, this is the, the uh, test runner, the Tau Advance product, the new interface that we have there. And because it is beyond multiple choice, I thought I'd demonstrate um, a couple of interfaces that uh, uh, have question types that were not just multiple choice. And I think what I'm going to try to do here is demonstrate not only the mouse capabilities, right? So this is typically a drag and drop. Sometimes it's called that. Um, it's really a match interaction in terms of the QTI specification. And uh, we wanted to make sure that it was usable, uh, again, on all these device platforms. And if you're using a keyboard, 
that I want you to be able to access um, and use these interfaces with your keyboard. So as you can see here, I've, I've got some clear focus on the area that I want to move. I can then move that over. I can move it up and down uh, to make my choice of where I want to put it. And then that lets me decide, oh, wait, maybe I want to move that out. I'm not quite ready. Um, but it lets me make selections all um, using um, uh, keyboard control. So I'm just using tab and shift tab to be able to make these choices to put it in. And then I can decide to move them up or down in the list, right? These are all selections being made uh, using a keyboard. And that's usually a pretty good indicator of access by assistive technology. Given the live demo today, I didn't think it would be, uh, it's often tricky to get the, the active screen reader running at the same time. But if we did, we'd be getting constant feedback about the status change of, of where our responses are being put and what state they're in, that sort of feedback that we get. Um, so we tested all of that on um, screen readers to make sure we had these capabilities. So you can also see that I can, uh, you know, I can mark for review. This is all happening uh, in this tab. I'm just using tab on my uh, interface. I can go to an overview screen, right? That's gonna let me see, you know, here's the whole test map, uh, which ones are bookmarked, which ones are incomplete. Um, uh, that's the overview area, but all of these areas are all uh, configurable and WCAG compliant for keyboard capability. We spent a lot of time on that to make sure that our users have the choice of using it either by keyboard or mouse. And actually, once you get used to the controls and the keyboard, I find it easier to use the keyboard. So let me just also jump to uh, maybe another one, right? It's beyond multiple choice. So here's a slider thing, which is typically a very uh, visually oriented kind of way of answering the question. How am I gonna, how am I gonna figure this information? So um, I could either, you know, type in something and say, okay, this might, I'm getting you a scale. So I could just type in what the scale is, or I can move to one of these buttons and, you know, incrementally move it down, up or down, however I wanna be able to do that. So that's just uh, two examples. Uh, we have uh, support for a wide range of of item types across uh, the Tau platform, right? So uh, just to just to sort of skim through some of these kinds of things, uh, they're all uh, the kinds of things that you can uh, use with a with a keyboard, and that's an important part of the uh, the interface. So I'm going to quickly, even though the, I have a bunch of multiple choice questions in this next choice, this is really me focusing on the navigation changes. Uh, for us, and if you look at the the older version of of Tau, you'll see that we have um, it's a bar on the on the left side. It gives you a lot of information, but we started seeing that, particularly with the lower age groups, it was almost an overwhelming amount of information. So you can see the navigation uh, overview is on the on the bottom is pretty clean. Now it's giving me representations of. Uh, where I've already visited, which ones I've answered, which ones are marked for review, right? So if I mark this for review, it's going to clearly show that it is. Uh, if I went to another question, right, I can tell me that it's been answered once I submit it. Uh, so I'm getting all that feedback even uh, as I as I progress through this uh, this part of the test. But if I go to the overview, I can also submit the part, right? It's giving me all sorts of feedback about my completion stage, right? So I'm now this part of the test, I've moved to a more linear kinds of navigation. And instead of seeing those little button bars that let me hop around between the tests, right? At least I'm just getting an indication in the lower left of where I am in the progress of this particular section, right? So I can answer my question and move on to the, the next part of the, the test. And I thought I'd just quickly show, if I could, this, um, uh, even though this is really a, a question that you would answer as an essay question, I, I, because it's a demo, I threw in the math capability, right? Just to show here's a, here's a math interface that helps uh, people enter uh, formulas into their open response uh, kinds of questions. So I hope that gives you uh, a good sense of the cleanliness, right? The sort of clean atmosphere, really focus on the, on the, on the content and also let you, um, uh, use the full accessibility features, which was part of our, our design brief. So I'm going to quickly go back to, and given the time constraints, uh, I have my backup slides and uh, 
uh, we'll go through that. So the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is, um, is the Tau Grader. So this is our online open response marking capabilities. And this interface uses that same design system in order to give us feedback for the users. These tend to be uh, not the test takers. These are the folks that are coming in, either administrators or uh, marking professionals or teachers. And they come in and they, they make changes. So right, I could have an overview of the scoring projects and then that's still using that same design system that I was using in my test runner, a very clean, uh, modern, uh, interface, right? Still built with the full accessibility capabilities. So here's an example of a screen uh, where I have multiple traits, right? There's more, more than one score that has to be entered for this particular submitted essay. I have full access to the, um, the question and the response. I have highlighter tools that let me uh, work through. Uh, maybe I'm using different colors for the different traits, however you want to use it, it's up to you. And I can even leave comments for why I justified this kind of response. Um, but still, uh, staying within the design system and meeting the design brief. So uh, if you wanted to go to the overview section, you could see a, a clear overview of all the kinds of scores that I've given so far for this particular task or the, uh, over a variety of tasks. I have a different, different ways of sorting this information. And uh, we've also got the rate the rater feature, which can be a little complex to describe. So I'll try to do that quickly, but it is basically uh, a way of saying, if you have a rater and you wanna have a check on that rater or a secondary set of scores that are provided, I can actually see the original score that was given by the rater. And then I can either agree with that score or I can disagree, right? And then I can submit my review, uh, which is a way of rating the rater, say, okay, if I'm a, an experienced person and I'm the person that uh, does the estimations of how well the raters are doing, uh, you're gonna probably use my score as a way of understanding how well the, the rater did, right? So, uh, I can see I'm at the end of my time and luckily I was able to get through uh, uh, all the screens that I had. Um, I, I thank you for your time. If you have more questions, of course, please contact me, Thomas H at TauTesting.com uh, and I will try to answer uh, any questions that were